the rainforest of the Ecuadorian Amazon is the most biodiverse ecosystem on the planet. More than 600 species of trees can coexist in a single hectare, and more species of mammals, birds, amphibians, and insects have been recorded here than any place else on Earth. Much of the life here is in the treetops, 100 feet or more above the forest floor. The warm year-round temperatures and ample rainfall allow plants like these orchids and bromeliads to spend their entire lives on the branch of a giant saba tree. But here in Wisconsin, things look pretty different. The 12 or so species that make up the forest canopy cope with months of frigid winter by going dormant and losing their leaves. Look at this amazing leaf litter. Each autumn, tons of nutrients fall to the forest floor with the leaves. But these nutrients aren't decomposed right away because the temperatures are too cold. It's not until spring when it warms up that fungi and bacteria begin to decompose these leaves. It's that annual pulse of nutrients in the spring that allow trees to rapidly flush out their leaves and take advantage of the short growing season. In this temperate forest, the winners and losers are not decided by interactions with their neighbors, but rather by who has the ability to cope with the harsh winter climate. Even though these places seem extremely different, and in many ways they are, we call them both forests because there's still quite a few ecological processes that unite them. In week one, we will define what a forest is and learn why they differ from place to place. Forests aren't just places where numerous species of woody plants live together with an array of wildlife. They're also the source of valuable resources and ecological services that humans depend upon. They give us wood, fruit, fiber, medicines, and wildlife. But more than that, they give us oxygen, remove CO2 from the atmosphere, clean and cycle our water, and provide recreational opportunities and spiritual solace. As human population grows, the pressure on the world's forests is increasing. Urban development, expanding agriculture, climate change, and searches for new sources of fossil fuels and other natural resources all take land that once was covered in forests. While we rely on forests for many important products and services, we continue to clear them at an alarming rate. The loss of forest is a global conservation concern. Fortunately, there are many practical, science-based solutions for sustaining the world's forest and biodiversity. Science, policy, and the everyday behaviors of people like you and me must all come together to sustain forest ecosystems into the future. We'll talk about approaches already being implemented at local, national, and global scales, and from the Midwest to Madagascar. I'm Dr. Katherine Woodward. I'll see you in the forest. <laughs>